I'm Jerry Gordon, the senior editor of the New English Review. We're here with Dr. Richard L. Rubenstein, a contributing editor of the NER. And Richard, you had a very interesting talk this morning about President Obama and his agenda for both the United States and the world. I wonder if you might be able to give us the high points that you talked about this morning. Basically, I think that uh, uh, encapsulating what I said, Obama is really a revolutionary. That doesn't mean he's looking to stir up violent trouble, but I believe that he is trying to transform both the American um, political system and economic system and America's relationship to the world. I also believe that um, he has decided that America must make its peace with Iran and that he has stalled all attempts to bring meaningful sanctions to Iran. Um, for, finally, I believe that uh, he is a man who is highly intelligent, knows what he's doing, and in spite of the fact that uh, he has attracted liberal Jewish supporters, some with great wealth, uh, his intention is to uh, correct the historical mistake of the creation of the State of Israel. This, by the way, has been a theme that has gone through American diplomacy from uh, the time that uh, the State of Israel was first created in 1947 and 1948 when uh, Secretary of State George Marshall and uh, Dean Acheson, who was later to be Secretary of State, and John McCoy and a number of other people who have been called wise men told Truman that uh, it would be a mistake to establish the state of Israel. Marshall threatened that he would um, resign as Secretary of State if Truman went through with it. Truman nevertheless went through with it, but there has been a tradition in the State Department ever since that uh, this was an historic mistake. Problem is that if you try to correct this mistake, you can only do this by not only destroying the state, but by destroying the people. And uh, since the Arabs have not been able to destroy the state by themselves, they have used diplomacy and international pressure to create a situation in which the odds are stacked in the UN and elsewhere in the diplomatic world heavily against Israel. Uh, given Obama's background, the fact that his family was uh, on his father's side was Muslim, that his sister is a Muslim, that his uh, half-brother is a Muslim, uh, there is no doubt that he heard a great deal about uh, Islam and Israel from them uh, before he um, took office and though he was not candid about it at first he has by his decisions and his uh, symbolic actions um, made it clear where his sympathies are. I have no doubt that he would not be unhappy to see the destruction of the state of Israel as long as he can say that uh, my hands have not shed this blood, which is a phrase from the Bible. Uh, in addition to that, he has a hostility towards Western Europe, uh, especially to England, uh, as characterized by the symbolic action of returning the bust of Winston Churchill to the English, one of his first acts. And uh, he has made some uh, interesting symbolic moves with, um, uh, for example, bowing to King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. Since King Abdullah is the keeper of the two holiest shrines of Islam, 
Mecca and Medina, one wonders why uh, he did this. But when a head of state, which is what Obama is, makes a symbolic statement like that, you know he's trying to convey a message, and it's not one that we in Western civilization can um, really accept. Uh, finally, the, um, he has talked of a nuclear-free uh, Middle East and a nuclear-free world. And what he intends to do, of course, is if he can, to disarm uh, Israel's great equalizer, it has been able to uh, defend itself against the far more numerous Arabs by virtue of the fact that it has nuclear weapons. And Obama will, and he's indicated he will, apply every pressure to Israel to um, take that equalizer away from him. Then, So the way I see it is that this man is a menace to Israel, to Western Europe, and I might add that Western Europe is uh, beginning to have sanctions against Iran, which are far greater and more effective than anything Obama was willing to tolerate, and to the whole of the Western world. He aims for a radical transformation. He is the most radical president America has ever had. Richard, thank you very much. Okay.